Hi guys, Bobby M back for another video and we're going to do something really different this time. I just found a software called Cam Studio which you can see on the screen here and it's a free application for capturing uh, desktop video for doing tutorials and things like that. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to give you a quick overview of Beer Tools Pro. Uh, 1.5 was just released this September and it includes a free trial period and I suspect a lot of people are going to be downloading this and trying it out for the first time. And I want to warn that the software isn't as intuitive as Beersmith or ProMash. And I don't, I don't want the uh, little bit of a higher learning curve to dissuade you from really trying this software and, and seeing the power that it has. Um, this first part's going to be just about setting up the software for recipe creation. And uh, if necessary, I'll do a second part that talks about how to set up a brewing schedule for doing all grain batch barging. All right, so the first thing is when you first open up the software, everything is pretty much blank. Um, the first thing you want to do is pick what, your, what kind of style you're going for, if that's a, uh, important to you. Uh, what we're going to do is select a Blondale first, and we'll just call it Test Blonde. And you can fill in the author name, and you can select the date that you actually plan to brew it. And uh, that's a neat little feature because that'll be uh, also duplicated on your printouts and exports um, if you wanted to post it online somewhere. All right, so let's make sure we start with selecting the volume of our batch, which is very important. Uh, I select six gallons because that's what I like to have in my fermenter, um, just so that I can compensate for all the losses along the way and get a good five and a half gallons in my keg. And I'm going to lock that down. Notice there's a little uh, checkbox here. And that locks the final volume to say that no matter what you change from now on, it's not going to overwrite this volume. All right, the next thing you want to do is figure out the um, evaporation rate. And this is the only, you're only going to figure this out by experimenting with your boil kettle and your burner. I found that about a gallon and a quarter per hour is my boil off rate in a Sankey kettle. So that's what I set it to. Um, my boil duration, 60 minutes, and you can change it to anything you want. You can change it to 90. If you rather list it in hours, you can do 1.5 hour, and it'll change it appropriately, okay? But I'm going to stick with 60 minutes. So based on my evaporation loss and what I want my final volume to be in the fermenter, it's telling me I need a seven and a half gallon collection uh, or pre-boil, all right? And you'll also want to set your efficiency. And if you haven't brewed an old grain before, you don't know what your efficiency is going to be. So this is kind of a educated guess. Um, 75 is pretty conservative. I, I get about 88 to 90 percent. Let me just put in 85 just as a conservative figure here. All right. Now, it's basically ready to go to start adding ingredients. And what we need to do is select ingredients database in this left hand pane. Okay. Once we select that, it lists all of the ingredients that beer tools has in its database or its catalog. And uh, it's pretty inclusive. It has most of the different ingredients that you're going to be able to get at your local home brew store. Let's start with our base grain. If you go all the way to the right top, there's a search box. And this works similar to iTunes and how it does dynamic filtering based on your entry. So let's just say that we're going to use Maris Otter as our base. Just when I type Maris, it, it already has done the filtering. All right, I'm going to select Thomas Fawcett. There's two ways of adding this to your recipe. You can either drag it directly like that, or you can also right click and hit add to recipe. All right, so you can see it was added there. Let's add one specialty malt just for example's sake. Let's put in 10L. 
You can see uh, Bryce North America two row caramel malt 10L. That's what I was looking for. And now let's grab some hops. Let's go with Cascade. All right. All right, we found our Cascade hops. I'm going to add to recipe. Now I'm going to have a bittering flavor and aroma addition for this Cascade hop. And instead of going and dragging it three times, you can go into here, right click on it and hit duplicate. And I'm going to do that twice so that I have three hop additions. So the next thing we do is we want to start changing the the various increments or amounts of these ingredients so that our style guideline is met pretty well. All right, now at the bottom here, they give us an analysis window, or I should say a style window that tells us what the acceptable ranges are for the OG, the terminal gravity, color, alcohol, and bitterness for this particular style. And we can see it change dynamically as we change the amounts that we use. So let's say that for our base grain, we're going to use eight pounds. You can just overwrite directly on that line item. I'm going to put eight. It assumes pounds if you don't put any units. For our Crystal 10L, uh, I'm going to show you a different way to enter it. You can select up or down arrows and it goes in one pound increments up and down. You can also overwrite. I can put in eight ounces, which is half a pound, or I can put in, uh, I could put in 0 0.5, 0 0.5 ounces. It, it remembered that ounces was the last thing you entered. So if you want pounds, you could do 0.5 pounds. It's um, intuitive in that way that it kind of understands what you're looking to put in. For our hop additions, we need to tell it how long we're going to boil it for and how much. So instead of clicking 60 times on the arrow, I'm just going to put in 60. My aroma, uh, I should say my flavor is going to be 15 minutes and then my aroma is zero, which it's listed at. I'm going to use one ounce for each addition. All right, and just a quick note, if your cascades are not five and a half alpha, you can go in, right click and hit edit so that uh, you can overwrite the alpha. But let's just say that mine are five and a half and everything's cool. Okay, so now let's look at our analysis on the bottom here. This is a real time graph of where our recipe falls within the style guidelines. And the bottom one here is our IBUs and it's 30.7 IBUs, which is out of range. If you're okay with that, you leave it alone. If not, you can go in and do some adjusting. Let's try changing our bittering edition, our 60 minute edition to three quarters of an ounce instead of one and you can see that it now put the IBUs within range and the actual number is 25 IBUs and the max is 28 so we know that we're in range. Now I have a quarter ounce sitting around doing nothing I'm just going to go in and add that to my aroma addition which is never going to hurt. And again it doesn't affect bitterness. Alright that's about it for this short video uh, the next part is going to be how to set up the schedule so that you know how much infusion water to use and at what temperature and how to do your batch sparge and everything. So um, hopefully you'll stick around for that.